My name is Santana Ferales. My pronouns are she, they. I'm Osvaldo Olivares. My pronouns are he, him. My name is Serena Carmona. My pronouns are she, her. My name is Alejandra Martinez. I'm also known as Puerto Wordies, and my pronouns are she, they. For me, when it comes to mediums, I kind of flip-flop. Sometimes I have like a journal and I'm just filling it up. And then sometimes I'm like, no, I want to type this out. Like I want to have this fast and quick and I want to be able to post this and have people see it as fast as possible. As I've been able to work more with visual creation and like making videos and video production, I've wanted to make the shift into more audio produced stuff. I want people to hear the way I'm saying it sometimes because I, I feel like a lot can be lost in the translation if you're reading it on a page or on a screen. This is about unrequited love. My superpower is being able to fall hard because I feel all of my feelings so strongly. I've been able to see the universe and anyone I've ever had feelings for. To see the body crafted from stardust and scattered atoms. Molecules are duplicated and divided, molded by the hands of a loving creator. Then creation breathed into him in one gentle sigh. Every boy I've ever fallen for, I've been cursed to see this way. I've begged and pleaded to an unhearing, uncaring God to allow me to run my hands over their work to feel the breath of creation on my lips. What sins did I or my foremothers commit to be denied such heaven? What virtues must I master to be allowed to kneel before the Creator's work and receive Holy Communion? The moment my sibling graduated college and they came back, they've always been very, very supportive of me and my artwork. Um, so was my, my grandfather, and both of them were constantly encouraging me to be involved in my sibling's short film production. So I did all of the promotional artwork for the posters, the merchandise, and I was also one of the assistants for the set designers, and I was able to like decorate their rooms, and it was like a dream come true. That was my staple piece for back where I was from in the Coastal Bend area in Corpus Christi. And here, it's probably the work that I've um, been doing, my volunteer graphics and illustrations for Blank Magazine. It's something that is very much a staple of whenever people uh, talk about my work, is this kind of like clown-esque uh, motif, which is like the payasin, which I now created like this small character. I'm more of like a traditional type of artist, like in the sense of drawing but my forte of choice is digital art. Moving forward, I'm more definitely getting into like the video editing, just like as I'm hanging around with all these nice people that have different like skill sets of their own. As I believe last year, I made a video for the hospitality company that I worked for. Everyone came up to me saying like, dude, that was the best one here. And he was just like really hyping it up, like being really nice to me. They like my little video, that made me realize it's not a little video. Like this is for real. Like we're all great artists and we're all like achieving the dreams that we're like we were dreaming of. For me, I do mostly dabble on Procreate. Before that, it was like fire on my little like <laughs> my little laptop from the pawn shop, just like, you know, drawing with my mouse. But ever since I got my my iPad, I definitely feel like my art has increased in its like skill level because Definitely like all of the access to all the colors without having to buy everything. Currently my work is almost entirely digital because most of it is writing. There's a lot of stuff that I'm really proud of up there. And I wrote a poem about the valley and kind of the growth of it. My blood has walked through the valley since before it was ever called the valley, before the border crossed us. Just as I am an amalgamation of all who came before me, the valley is too. For me, I am as analog and as traditional as I get because I have tried digital and I respect it, but coming from a very traditional background, it is very hard for me to like, you know, get into that and learn all the controls. And the medium that I prefer to use is uh, oil, oil paint, oil pastels, um, really anything that is traditional. Watercolor is also one of my favorites, ink as well. Um, and then as of recent, these recent years, I have tried, you know, using and trying to push myself as makeup, as an art form as well. And that's just so cool. We all have our different lanes that we just love. Yes. In high school, I was like drawing a lot of fan art. Something was like Steven Universe. I was really uh, into that. And there were like these murals from the show. And as I did the murals, like in my little computer uh, digital, digital drawing program, I feel like I was leveling up with each one because I was like practicing the anatomy, getting the lighting right, looking at them. And that was like a pivotal moment that shifted me to like, oh, 
this has to get serious. And from that moment when I was 16, comparing it to now, I have uh, three vans going around in McAllen that I designed for, the hotels that I worked for. It's just like, whoa, I'm so in love with how things ended up. When I was at the flower shop one morning, I was, you know, kind of like asleep, not really. It was like at seven, I got up, I uh, went to the restroom, came back. I remember closing my door, right? I didn't lock it. I remember just closing the doorknob. And then, you know, I'm in my bed trying to go back to sleep because it's seven, I'm like, I'm not doing this. And then I vividly see and hear the doorknob, the door, you know, open here. And I was like, oh, it's, you know, it's one of my, you know, other, you know, my friends who are down the hall, it's probably them. I get up and I'm like, I was so freaked out. I didn't know what to do. The way to just like calm myself was like, I'm just gonna pretend that didn't happen. So I started drawing this, a circle and then this, and I was like trying to be like, that didn't happen, that didn't happen. The daffodil motif has been something of my recent work, you know, that symbolizes the Narcissus, you know, the, the story of this myth, this man who fell in love with his image. And it's a motif that I have used a lot in my work. A piece that I would like to show off that I did actually really recently is something I have done for Entre, which is for their Boca Chica Corazon Grande donor social. It's an event to celebrate all of the people that have donated to the Boca, Boca Chica Corazon Grande cause because it's essentially a call for a lot of attention to be drawn to how the wildlife is being affected in Boca Chica from, unfortunately, the expansion of SpaceX. I have been wanting to do a lot of art around native plants and wildlife and biodiversity in general, so that includes all of the unfortunately endangered animals that have been affected by this situation, and I really had just wanted to use my art and my medium to communicate the significance of that. I started out my like career in radio. I had an advice show on Black Ghetto Radio. It was called um, Moonlit Vibes with DJ Santana. And I would answer um, questions with my tarot cards. I would just get like random advice questions with my and like answer with my tarot cards. I noticed when I was doing that, a lot of them were like very queer based questions. And then when I got to Trucha, I asked them if I could do something similar and they allowed me to and it was so good to get all these people's questions and write to them and give them a piece of myself and have a piece of them with me like every time that I wrote. I wanted to feel like I am your friend and I'm talking to you and you have a safe space where you can talk to someone and I don't think enough people have that, especially not here in the valley when it comes to like existing in queer spaces. Here in the middle, I really wanted to showcase one of the vans that I designed for the hospitality company that I mentioned is like around in McAllen. This one's a black one and the other two are white. And gosh, it's just so special. They're, I made billboards for them, commercials, but seeing a van that frequents the McAllen airport, so many people from around the world are seeing my design. And even though it doesn't say my face, uh, say my name or have my face, like I know that I made that. For me, it's just really crazy to think about how, because additionally in my siblings short film story, it's very like, if I had to compare it to something, it's very like the craft, it's very, you know, like Y2K and it's relationship between the characters, which are four, um, teenagers, two of them are transgender women. We had a lot of people talk about how it related to them all the way up in San Antonio and like the Austin area because they were watching the film and they were like, I know these girls. Like I was this girl, I was in this friend group. It was very reaffirming just to be a part of something like that and have that influence on people. I think when people say that like, oh, there's nothing creative that you can do in the valley, they're really limiting themselves. We let ourselves get way too limited in this idea that like, oh, it's just the valley. There are people here that are gonna resonate with the things that you're creating. There is a lot of opportunity. There is like, you know, this multitude of spaces that I can choose from to be a part of, but I'm like, oh, like, which one? You know, and everybody knows each other and everybody's like so friendly with each other. And I'd have to say the ones so far that have been very significant to me that I would like to see more people. Definitely something like Entre, which is this very like open, uh, free to the public screening, uh, film screening center. Another really good place that I like to go to sometimes is the Gremlin because the Gremlin in McAllen has um, hosted a lot of 
locally created bands, groups, and artists who are very talented. These spaces, like we've mentioned before, like Entre and Cactus Valley that are, you know, in the Harlingen downtown area, I feel like have helped a lot of people who are very new to the scene and are very young to have the opportunity to show and be, feel, I guess, that there is space for them. I think for the future of the of the valley and just throughout, you know, the upper and the lower valley, I think taking consideration that this is the first time that anyone is doing anything and that, you know, you have to give a fair chance to speak to everyone and to be open. If you have a space that, or you had the idea to, you know, host other artists who are beginning and, you know, pay them and give them a stipend to, to work, it's always something that I feel like will foster more activity in the area. You know, to be able to cultivate these spaces, very intimate spaces, working with other people, uh, you know, to have that level to say, you know what, this area is very much deserving of that and many more programs in the future for people to be, you know, uh, part of and living in. I think I would love to see that more. Specifically, maybe even something more, you know, about queer artists and hosting, you know, queer artists. There are these like beautiful people around like Santana and like my peers here that I just met. And I think that there's a good job being done, but we just need to remember some people have different types of art and they should still be welcome to like these art walks or like the art cells. Be the change you want to see, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. And that's all I can hope for, that we just keep inviting more people and having fun.